Welcome back to Chem with Go. Today we're going to take a look at the chemical equilibrium and the concept. And we're just going to take a look at a general equation for now and uh, explain what happens if I have an equilibrium, uh, a reaction that's at equilibrium or at an equilibrium state. So first, you have to understand that in order for a reaction to be at equilibrium, it first needs to be reversible. And what I mean by reversible is that the reactants can form the products, but then the products can also go back and form the reactants. Now, a lot of different chemical reactions are actually very reversible. For example, the formation of smog, um, even uh, things dissolving in water uh, have some sort of solution equilibrium. Now, again, let's just take a look at this very simple equation, some generic equation, A, will react with B, to form C plus D. But then C and D can come back and form A and B, depending on the conditions for the reaction. Now, there's three different stages for equilibrium. It's the initial change, there's the shift, and what happens okay, at the end in order for, get, for it to get back to equilibrium. Now, this is a very simplified sort of explanation, and it's only uh, designed for uh, high school chemist at the high school chemistry level. So let's take a look. If I stress the system a little bit, okay, on either side, what's going to happen, or on, on either side, what's going to happen is the reaction will shift to alleviate the stress. That's known as Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, now think about it like two buckets, like this, connected with a tube. Okay, where the reactants are on the left side. And the products are over here on the right. Now, I know that this is sort of a very simplified version. Again, there are some problems with this model, but for our purposes, this happens to work. If I increase, okay, let's say there's water on both sides. If I increase the amount of water on the left bucket, what's going to happen is the water will start to shift in this way. Now, once it starts to shift this way, the number of products will increase, okay, and the number of reactants will decrease to compensate for the new addition of the stuff that's on the reactant side, so that the levels are going to be equal again. Now, think about equilibrium as not being the levels being the same, but more like the amount of water going to the right is equal to the amount of water going to the left. That's what equilibrium really means, okay? Now, Conversely, let me go ahead and make some erasures. Okay. All right. Now, if I add a little bit more water to the right bucket, which I'm adding more stuff to the, uh, if I add more C or add more D in my equilibrium reaction, what's going to happen is this level of water starts to go down because the water starts to shift over to the left, which makes more of the reactants. And then at some point, those levels will be at the same uh, height again. But really, what's more important is to understand that it's the amount of water going to the right is equal to the amount of water going to the left. Again, a very simplified sort of explanation of equilibrium, and we'll see you in the next lecture.